Go for Broke, the triumph of the 442nd. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. On December 7, 1941, the Empire of Japan attacked the United States naval base at Pearl Harbor, killing over 2,000 military personnel and civilians. This attack would ruin the lives of over 100,000 Americans. Japanese Americans. Japanese Americans were either first-generation American citizens with Japanese ancestry, the Nisei, or Japanese immigrants, the Issei. They had endured a great deal of racial prejudice for the last decade. The U.S. government had been keeping tabs on them in case of an invasion from Japan. An hour after the attack on Pearl Harbor, certain Japanese Americans were arrested and taken in for questioning. On February 14, 1941, ten weeks after Pearl Harbor, President Franklin Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066. This order gave the military, or the newly formed War Relocation Authority, power to remove anyone under the pretense of military necessity. In the following months, thousands of Japanese Americans were removed from their homes and their rights taken away, for no other reason than their ancestry. However, some would later go to fight for their country in the 442nd Regimental Combat Team and triumph over the tragedies they were forced to endure. All along the West Coast, Japanese Americans were told to leave their homes. They were given one week to sell all that they had. As the War Relocation Authority said, the Quick disposal of property often involved financial sacrifice for the evacuees. This gave dishonest neighbors a chance to buy land and other belongings for less than they were worth. Those taken were allowed to bring very little with them. First, they were transferred to holding centers while the internment camps were built. These centers were usually fairgrounds or horse stalls at racetracks and were often cramped and smelly. However, this was only the beginning of the tragedies the Japanese Americans were forced to endure. The Japanese Americans were then moved to the internment camps even though these were still under construction. The camps were surrounded by barbed wire and had guard towers with machine guns. The new inmates were told this protection was for their safety, but the machine guns always pointed in. The camps were very crowded, and lines for food were long. In some, the heat was sweltering, while in others, it was freezing cold. Walls were thin, so any noise carried. The War Relocation Authority tried to set up schools and other recreational activities, so it would seem like home, but it was still prison. As the war moved on, negative opinion for the Japanese Americans began to decline. Inmates were given a test to assess their loyalty. Those deemed patriotic might be allowed to leave the camps, though they could not resettle on the west coast. Or they might be eligible for armed service in the newly forming 442nd Regimental Combat Team. Not all the Japanese Americans were imprisoned, and not everyone in the 442nd Regimental Combat Team was from the camps. But all knew what was going on. These camps were not a secret. A former U.S. soldier who was removed from the army at the beginning of the war for his Japanese ancestry and placed in an internment camp said to his mother when given the chance to rejoin in the 442nd, This is my second opportunity to serve my country and prove that I am a loyal American citizen. By showing that we're good fighters and loyal Americans, the government may rescind Executive Order 9066 and give our family an opportunity to be sent back home. The 442nd was segregated, except for the officers, who were Caucasian. The team trained at Camp Shelby, Mississippi. It was said of them in a military report written after the war, The men proved from the beginning to be willing, conscientious, loyal, and anxious to prove their devotion to their country. The 442nd slogan was, Go for broke, taken from an old gambling term which meant to give it all that they had. The men would scream this as they went into battle. The 442nd was activated on April 22, 1944, and arrived in Italy on June 26. Their goal was to clear the Germans from the Apennines mountain range, which ran down the length of Italy. The British were on the east side of the mountains, while the Americans were on the west. Since the Germans were entrenched, it was not easy for the attackers to reach them. 
At the end of the Apennines sat the Arno Valley, marking the end of German control in the mountains. But as the Germans were pushed back, they created a line on the other side of the valley as a last stand, the Gothic Line, which stretched the breadth of Italy. Behind this line, it was clear and open land until the Alps, perfect for pushing the Germans back. By August 12, 1944, the Arno Valley was in Allied hands. Back home, newspapers started to praise the 442nd's brave actions. A new front was being created in France, and the 442nd was sent to help. On September 26, 1944, the 442nd was shipped to Marseille, France, to join the attack and open another front. They arrived on September 30th. It was hard fighting through the woods, but soon the 442nd would prove themselves once again, freeing what would become known as the Lost Battalion. It was October 24th, and the Texas 141st Infantry was fighting in the Vosges Mountains when tragedy struck. They were cut off completely, surrounded, and communications were gone. The 442nd had been fighting furiously for days in the front lines and were to be given a break, but when the Texas Battalion was lost, they were sent in to help. It took six days. The first two attacks failed, but on the third, they broke through the German line despite being outnumbered. They would push on in the front line for the next nine days and lose over half their strength in casualties. The 442nd would then be split, and in April 1945, some would be shipped back to Italy to help break through the Gothic line. The others would go on to free the concentration camp of Dachau, a few miles north of Munich. In a 2004 interview, 442nd veteran George Oye said, Our families were in concentration camps in the States. Being the ones that liberated concentration camps, the real ones in Europe, seems so strange. The 442nd had proved themselves to their country. They were the most decorated unit in the army. As Secretary of War Robert Patterson's personal representative told the 442nd, Your combat record has not been surpassed. They earned 550 silver stars, 9,486 purple hearts, 21 medals of honor, 5,200 bronze stars, and an unprecedented seven presidential citations, and much more. On July 15, 1946, the triumphant 442nd marched in a parade through Washington, D.C. After the parade, the last presidential citation was given by President Harry S. Truman, who said, You have fought not only the enemy, but you have fought prejudice, and you have won. Back in the U.S. on January 2, 1945, the Japanese Americans were released from the camps. By this point, the Japanese Americans were no longer considered a threat, and an attack on Japan from the West Coast was very unlikely. The feelings of those leaving the camps were varied. Some were hopeful, others angry or sad. Some had lost everything and felt they were too old to start over. Inmates could now resettle on the West Coast. When residents left the camps, the War Relocation Authority gave $50 to families and $25 to individuals, plus a train ticket to where they came from. Public opinion towards the returning Japanese Americans varied. There was still strong racism, but the editors in the newspapers and government leaders mostly welcomed them. The mayor of Los Angeles held a welcoming ceremony in City Hall for the returning Japanese Americans. More than 40 years later, in August of 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed the Civil Liberties Act. This gave all internment camp survivors $20,000 as an official apology. The internment of the Japanese Americans was a dark time in America's history, and we should never let something like this happen again. However, the men in the 442nd Regimental Combat Team triumphed over the tragedy of the camps and fought to prove themselves to a country that had imprisoned them. As President Bill Clinton said, Rarely has a nation been so well served by a people so ill-treated. <laughs>